Peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, since you had the opportunity to sit for the reading of the gospel, I was going to invite you to stand for the entirety of the sermon. (laughs) But we won't do that this morning. In fact, uh, over the next couple weeks, we are going to be having these marathon readings, if you will, from the gospel, all of which uh, focus around baptismal imagery. And it was certainly most appropriate at the 8.30 service this morning when we celebrated four baptisms around the font. It was uh, wonderfully organized chaos, uh, but just a wonderful celebration. So today, we encounter Jesus in his journeys, and after a long travel, you recognize and hear that he is tired, and so he goes to the place to get a drink of water. He goes to perhaps the best rest area that one could imagine. He stops at Jacob's Well, which is located right between Nazareth on the north and Jerusalem on the south. He comes to the well thirsty as his disciples go into town for a bite to eat when this woman approaches the well. Now, a few things about this woman. We don't know her name. And we don't know how old she is. But nevertheless, she comes to the well in the middle of the day, high noon, to gather water. She comes to this place as she would have, day in and day out. And what's important about this interaction is that this is the longest one-on-one conversation that Jesus has with any one individual in all of Scripture. So that oven in itself tells us something, that this must be important. This interaction between Jesus and the woman at the well certainly carries with it some significance. But one of the temptations for us as the hearer, as the listener of this story, is to simply think of it as a story as to how we are to treat one another, particularly those who are different than us. Now, that of in itself is a good message, but if we leave it at that, I think we miss out on the breadth and depth of the radicalness of what is happening right here in Samaria. And the other temptation then is for us, if we begin to think that we ourselves are just as good as Jesus, we pat ourselves on the back and we say, great job. And then we have a tendency to set up boundaries or to decide for ourselves who is chosen or who is rejected. In other words, to cast judgment and draw lines in the sand. But in all of my years, I have come to learn that when we do that, when we decide for ourselves who's chosen, who's rejected, when we draw those boundaries, those lines, that we will always find Jesus on the other side. And that is where we find him today. Everything Jesus was doing today went against all social, cultural, and religious norms of the day. Jesus, a man visiting with a woman. Jesus, a Jew visiting with a Samaritan. Things that you never, ever would have expected in that time. After all, Jews and Samaritans have been divided for centuries, primarily over where was the proper place to worship. And as a result of that, there was no interaction, or it was understood that there should be no interaction between Jews and Samaritans. And yet we find Jesus crossing over this boundary. And in doing so, I believe he reveals to us the beautiful imagery of God that comes to you and me in Jesus Christ. One of the other temptations in this reading is to focus on the woman having been married five times. And it's easy then to think perhaps that what this is really about is judgment and condemnation, that Jesus must have been appalled that this woman was married five times. But if we understand 
the context of the day and the social ramifications that can come from not being married, well, then it begins to make a little bit more sense. And that is where we start to see the beautiful touch of God in the midst of it. If you were a woman at that time, and men of that time, through war or famine or disease or illness or any number of things, were falling like flies, right? But if you were a woman who was a widow, you had really three options as to what you would do next. One, you could become a beggar. Two, a prostitute. Or three, be remarried. Find a husband again. So if we step back and we look at the woman at the well, at the Samaritan woman, what we really see revealed to you and me is a woman who is very smart. A woman who is very courageous, very strong. A woman who makes the best choice given the circumstances of the day and gets remarried again. And that is then where the beauty of God's love for you and me is revealed in this very story. But the beauty of it is this, that Jesus doesn't simply look at the woman, he rather sees her. He sees her, not as it, she is not invisible to Jesus, but he sees her for who she is. He sees her as a beloved child of God. He sees her as someone who has had a difficult and challenging life. In other words, Jesus steps into the messiness. Jesus enters into the mess of life and names the challenges, names them. And oh, how important that is when we can do that, to name exactly what it is that is on our hearts and in our minds that is affecting us at any given time. And Jesus does that. And in doing so, he shows her that she is not invisible, that she is of great worth, of great value. And the good news in this story is that Jesus does that for you and me day in and day out. That Jesus steps into the messiness of our lives at any given time and enters into that moment and is present, is really present with you and me. In the midst of broken relationships, Jesus is there. In the midst of life coming to an end, Jesus is there. In the midst of those who we mourn and grieve, who have gone before us, Jesus is there. In the midst of the darkness of addiction and mental illness and all the anxieties that go with it, Jesus is there. You are not alone. In the midst of life that stays the same or life that seems to always be changing, Jesus is there. Jesus is present. And that, my dear friends, is part of the beauty of this story of Jesus and the woman at the well. He enters into her life where she's at. And he enters into ours in the very same caring, compassionate, and loving way day in and day out. In other words, Jesus has a tendency to show up in the strangest of places in order to welcome the stranger. And in doing so, Jesus claims you, names you as a beloved child of God. This is the living water. This is the living water that God speaks to you and me about the living water that offers up hope and grace and promise, that offers up healing and everlasting life and forgiveness of sins. It is a promise that comes to you and me day in and day out. And it is a gift not only for the woman at the well, but it is a gift for you and me 
the beautiful living water of God. And in knowing that, I promise you, you will never thirst. And so knowing that, I encourage and invite you to do as the woman at the well did. Go out and share the living water. Amen.